It's Diversity TV, bringing you the untold stories for the week of December 31st, 2021, in English and French, from our River Valley studio in Net Mountain, Alberta's capital. Hosted by me, Amy Batum, professional translator and mediator. Sponsored by Ray Z Plumbing and Heating, now offering unbeatable deals for water heaters and furnaces. Here are the headlines for this week. For the last edition of the year, meet some of our 2021 AC Awards recipients in Alberta and Ontario. La Frappe celebrates a successful year welcoming newcomers and taking care of community members affected by COVID-19. And the question of the week is, what do you do when the weather is very cold over a period of time? Now, the news in detail. Segment 1. In Net Mountain, on December 26, at 7 p.m., our diversity team handed out AC Awards 2021 Entrepreneur of the Year to hardworking couple owners of bulk buy wholesale in our fantastic city. This Franklin of Diversity Magazine, and, uh, I have the honor today to present uh, our Entrepreneur of the Year 2021. <laughs> Some of the most beautiful plaques you can see in the world. Okay. With a very wonderful couple yes. who have done so well this year. I was here before when they were launching this location. I was at the, at the, at the south location when they launched. And I'm sure I'll be in the next location that we go. Yeah. 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 So, I need to just step forward. We also have the award which uh, of course, we are giving you a piece of Africa. Oh, wow. You want to have it? Okay. <laughs> and of course, we are flat with your bio. That's if you go on your table or your wall to keep up uh, signifying what you are doing in the community and for your business. Thank you. Thanks. And on that note, we say keep the good work, carry on the momentum and the energy to 2022. Thank you. And let even the sky doesn't stop. In the powerful city of Toronto, Canada, Faith Greaves is your first Diversity Magazine AC Awards 2021 community leader. The AC Awards Ambassador Professor Jude Kong and team who handed the award. And also in that vein, in the great city of Calgary, Canada, Sean Ogotonla is your AC Awards 2021 Community Leader of the Year. And I'm honored that Diversity Magazine recognized what we have done, and I thank Antimoji for nominating us. Um, but beyond this award, I think what is important is that I encourage everybody out there uh, to do your part. Uh, that's, there's a song that says, everybody's got a seed to sow. Uh, you have something that you can give, no matter how small. It's not about what you can get from it. It's about what you can give to make it better. So thank you very much, Tim.
everybody. I want to thank the executives of uh, Diversity Magazine. Thank you so much for... I, I look at this as an honor for my husband. And I also say that this is a well-deserved award. Because I tell you, sometimes I look at this man and I'm like, what are you made of? Do you ever get tired? And do we have to? He goes down to explain to me, oh, we have to. Because this is our community. This is what we can bring to the table. So I thank you for this award. And I say again, it's a well-deserved one. And Auntie Moji, you're just, uh, I thank you so much for this. Because you've been there and you're still there. A lot of people started with the community and you say, oh, I've put in my bit. But this is someone that is still there and is strong and in the association, doing all that it takes to make the association better. Thank you, everyone. And uh, this is just a great day for me. I'm so excited. Whereas Emmanuel Aladi, it's recognized as AC Awards, Awards 2021 Entrepreneur of the Year. Honor to receive this award today. Um, I wasn't expecting it, but um, I thank uh, my nominee, Antimoji, for thinking uh, of us and um, the effort we've uh, put in since we came to this country. And um, I do appreciate the award and um, I say thank you for the recognition. Antimoji uh, has, I think you have the eyes. Uh, she's very connected with the community, so I'm not surprised that she's able to find uh, all the hidden gems in the community. The award for entrepreneurship uh, for Emma is absolutely well deserved. Uh, knowing how much, uh, sometimes I wonder how he does it. Some of us has 24 hours a day. He, he seems to have like 36 or 48. <laughs> and somehow he still survives it. So in my congratulations, this is absolutely well deserved. And this is, this is even the beginning of the journey. He's, um, you have no idea what else is going through his head in terms of entrepreneurship. Congrats. In the lovely city of Red Deer, Canada, Daniel Mbewa, is your AC Award 2021 Entrepreneur of the Year. All right, so my name is Daniel. I'm out here in this nice and cold weather. I'm receiving my award. Um, I want to say thank you to uh, Diversity Magazine and also all the effort they have put in to at least recognize the entrepreneurs in this, um, in this field. So uh, my business is Marshall Technology. Uh, I work as a software consultant uh, we build mobile apps websites uh, and also virtual tours for our local businesses so we've been trying really hard to uh, help local businesses and uh, I thank you to diversity magazine to be able to uh, recognize our efforts at Marshall technology thank you uh, Franklin and your team and uh, continue with the great work thank you Want to know more about those making a difference in your community? Go to www.diversitymag.ca. Segment 2. Fashion and beauty time on Diversity TV this week. Now she can comb her natural hair with a smile or expose it to winter without fear of breaking or even style it without using chemical relaxer. We are talking about natural hair. Oh, yes, our diversity TV fashion and beauty host Anne Miner got some major lessons at the Diversity TV River Valley Studio to manage her natural hair fixed by Fatu, the owner of Njia Asili making products for natural hair. Fashion and beauty show will start in February 2022, but for now, and Mina does this weekly segment on Diversity TV. You may want to check out Gia Asili's product. Uh, you can get them on their website, uh, www.giaasili.com. Hello, beautiful world. This is Anne Mina, your host of the Fashion and Beauty Show at Diversity TV. Today here we have Fatu Tao, the founder and CEO of Njia Asili. How are you, Fatu? 
I'm doing good, thank you. Great to hear. Now tell us a bit about Njia Asili. Njia Asili is a company that works in the hair cosmetic industry. Mm-hmm. And uh, we control the whole process from the research and development to the production to the distribution of natural hair care products to our clients. Segment 3. Business news this week. This holiday season, we are encouraging you to support local, inspired by hashtag support local YYC. Did you know that 62% of retail businesses in Calgary are small businesses. And when you buy from local businesses in Calgary, for every $100 they earn, $58 goes back into the local economy. Other ways you can support local without spending any money. You can just leave positive review of the places and services you love on social media and online, or just subscribe to their mailing list. Let us take you on a tour of some local businesses in Edmonton and Calgary for these holidays. Our real estate experts summarized the year and made some predictions for 2022. It's Conrad, Conrad Agla. I'm a real estate agent um, in, based in Calgary. Uh, I work covering our better and I give the monthly updates to Diversity Magazine on uh, real estate, what is happening in the real estate market nationally and province-wide um, here from, from Calgary. Well, the year has been good. It has been good for, I would say, any, anyone that is in real estate, from agents to home homeowners and even buyers. I mean, people who have properties who have to sell their properties. We've seen appreciation all around across major property types, single family, semi-detached, townhouses, and condos are also beginning to pick up. So we've seen price increases from at least 1.6% in certain locations to up to 25% in certain property types in certain locations. So it has been a good good market. Uh, We've had, uh, when the year started, inflation was very low. Uh, There were government stimulus to kind of encourage people, companies to push in companies and also to uh, provide some support for people who lost their jobs that have, uh, this has helped a lot um, in, uh, in kind of, preventing uh, job loss. I mean, employment um, has recovered. We've seen an increase in employment. I said that the unemployment rate has has gone down. Uh, Inflation is actually getting higher now. Uh, So, I mean, from the beginning of the year or from last year when COVID hit, the government introduced some measures to kind of cushion the economy where interest rates got so low. And that also has, stimulated interest uh, in buyers and also in the real estate market altogether. So people bought um, so that uh, they can pay their own mortgage instead of renting. Uh, Rents, uh, I mean, owning a home uh, became very attractive. So uh, yeah, that has helped. Um, We had a lot of inventory at the beginning of the year, but uh, getting to the latter part of the year, uh, we, we are now seeing very low inventory. We've also seen increase in demand um, for our better property, prime our better property. We've seen people coming from outside the province and outside the country um, with so much interest in what is happening in our better. Uh, job-wise, I mean, we are seeing new companies coming up, uh, coming to our better uh, tech companies, Amazon recently, some companies were open in Edmonton, Calgary, Grand Prairie. So the economic prospects is, uh, is high. I mean, it's, everybody's hearing about Alberta. Uh, people in Ontario uh, selling their houses and moving here. Uh, some investors are also coming here. And even people uh, in this province have also opened up to, um, to, to, to buy property. So it has been uh, an interesting year. We've seen increased activity across board in, uh, in real estate in uh, in Alberta, and especially in the major cities, Calgary, Edmonton, Lethbridge, um, and other cities. It's still in recovery mode. So 2022 promises to be 
um, a very going to be a very interesting year. My anticipation or projection is that real estate activity is going to continue. Uh, I mean, there's going to be in increased demand, uh, low inventory, um, because the, I mean, the amount of interest we have from people from outside the province and even people within who want to buy and own home, their own home is, is so high. It's so high. So prices are going to continue to go up. Um, interest rates are expected to go up next year. We are expecting probably at least one percentage point increase in interest rate, especially variable rate. Um, inflation is high. So what that does is that it costs uh, uh, price, I mean, price, cost of cost of living to go high or uh, to be high. So uh, that's going to impact uh, home prices as well. Uh, we are having supply issues, supply disruption. Right now, we are just talking about Omicron. Uh, the question is after Omicron, what is next? I mean, the, this COVID virus keeps uh, mutating to different variants. So, uh, I mean, that's also impacting government policy and all of that. So, uh, COVID is co going to continue to provide um, an obstacle to uh, returning to normal when it comes to supply uh, chain issues. So, that is also causing, going to cause a lot of going to put a lot of pressure on pricing uh, of goods and also real estate as, as well. Uh, because most companies are also adapting to work from home, uh, we are seeing that people living in uh, cities where real estate prices are so high and unaffordable, most of these people are moving to communities and cities uh, where prices are affordable. So we are seeing a lot of influx into our better. I believe that will continue in uh, uh, into next year, uh, next year as well. Rent is also going up, um, so rent will continue. And because of increase in rent, uh, that will serve as also a catalyst for some people to 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 move up and buy and buy their own homes. So, uh, in, in 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 all, I believe that uh, the market, the real estate market, will be will be. Will be high. Uh, in terms of price appreciation, I personally feel that prices may be uh, 10 to 20 percent higher by this time next year. So, a house 500,000 today might be 550 to 600 by the end of next year. Uh, that is what, what I feel, um, and also from some of the little little <laughs> information or economic news that I, that I have access to. Uh, but yeah, but. Nobody can 100% predict what is going to happen, but we just have to, to prepare. But it is for certainty that interest rates are going up. They're going to continue to go up. People want to beat that. So majority of people are looking for ways to get into the market. Um, and prices are high in other provinces. So people are moving to provinces and cities where they can afford. Uh, employment is on the increase. So employment rate is going down. So uh, with uh, income, people have money to spend, and that is also adding to inflation. So in, in all, I can say that, yeah, the, the outlook for 2022 um, looks great. Uh, we, we are very optimistic that um, uh, we it's gonna be a good time for home owners and sellers. Uh, in terms of supply issues, uh, we don't know. We don't know what, how it's gonna, it's gonna be, but that was gonna have a, very huge impact on, on pricing. For those who want to buy, uh, but are waiting, my, I will encourage that they, they, they get ready, they get prepared and get into the market before it becomes uh, unaffordable because before properties get to that state that they cannot afford. Um, you just have to prepare and be ready and, um, and, just, and just buy. You don't need to wait for that long. Um, and for those who want to sell, uh, yeah, we encourage that, yes, uh, just take the necessary step, make sure your property is attractive, you can get the best price for it, uh, or the maximum price for it, um, yeah, and all these areas, if you need help, uh, myself and my team, we are available uh, to guide you and answer any question that you have. Um, yes, thank you. Yes, you can reach out. You can reach me at my number. My cell is 403 690 0809. 403 690 0809. Uh, my email is conrad at conradagla.ca. Uh, my website, conrad.agla.com. Um, conrad
conradagla.com or conradaglarealestate.com. And you can get me on Facebook, you can get me on Google, you can get me on uh, um, LinkedIn and LinkedIn. Instagram. So yeah, Instagram, uh, it's, uh, it's Conrad Agla Real Estate. Uh, but the easiest is to just send me a test or call me anytime and uh, yeah, I can answer your questions. Our people, all Albertans 18 plus are now eligible to book a third dose of an mRNA COVID-19 vaccine if it has been at least five months since their second dose. Albertans are encouraged to get the first mRNA vaccine available to them for a third dose. Pfizer will be offered to Albertans 18 to 29 years of age. If you are eligible, you can book online at www.alberta.ca slash vaccine or by calling health link 811 or participating pharmacies. Segment 5. What do we have for Diversity TV International News? Rest in peace, Desmond Tutu. South Africa's Nobel Peace Prize winning activist for racial justice and retired Anglican Archbishop of Cape Town died on Sunday at the age of 90. But as they said in Africa, elders don't die, they rest. Rest in peace. Segment six. What do we have for food this week? It's holidays at Monami Resto with spicy goat and fried plantain at 134 27th Road in Edmonton, Alberta. To order, call 587 525-2477 or go to www.monamiresto.com Segment 7 The Inclusion Project Get to know about the Inclusion Project Making Equity, Diversity and Inclusion EDNI, a competitive advantage in your organization and how your organization can lead with it. Is your organization at the baseline level, initiation stage, implementation level, celebration, sharing, or leading stage in its equity, diversity, and inclusion journey? The inclusion project. A project of Diversity Magazine, Canada's, Canada's largest multicultural publication, is a platform to recognize, share, educate, and promote equity, diversity, and inclusion, friendly practices, and what organizations are doing with respect to ED&I. For a detailed outline of this project, or want to get your organization's EDNI journey shared or considered for diversity awards, please go to www.diversitymag.ca. Segment 8. What do we have for community announcements this week? Get to know some of the employment programs offered by Solomon College in Edmonton? Please, contact 780-431-1515 
or info at solomoncollege.ca. And I'm here today to talk to you about three employment programs that Solomon College delivers. The first is our Connections to Employment program, uh, which focuses on preparing newcomers to work in the retail sector. Secondly, we have our Food Service Supervisor Preparation Program, which supports newcomers to develop skills to work in the food services sector. And our final employment training program is our Quest Key Workplace Essential Skills Training Program, which is designed to help newcomers build uh, warehouse technology skills to work in the warehousing sector. The Executive Director of La Frappe, Francophonie Albertin Pluriel, Inet Monton, Alphonse Aholan, tells Diversity TV about their historic 2021. Alphonse Aholan said they served and welcomed thousands of newcomers and still receiving more as the year wraps up despite the pandemic. They now have location in Net Mountain South, at Mountain North coming up, Fort McMurray, with in-school programs in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Northwest Territories. The new Edmonton location will be in the North Gate Mall. They also provided financial support to people to help those impacted by COVID-19 in partnership with 12 other organizations. Let's hear from Mr. Ahola directly. FRAP is not only working here in, the, in Edmonton. So we also have a, a, a settlement program in schools that we are coordinating for the whole prairies and the Northwest Territories. So FRAP is working not only in Alberta, but also in Saskatchewan, in Manitoba, and the Northwest Territory. So uh, that's very important because it's something very important that we're doing in schools. And, uh, 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 and one thing that we're planning to do next year, for instance, because you asked about that, yeah. is that we are discussing now with doctors, uh, with also engineers, with the University of Alberta and the Faculty of Medicine. We want to see how we can start preparing our uh, uh, immigrant st uh, student okay. to go, you know, to choose or to prepare themselves to become doctors, engineers, things like that. Oh, that's it, great. It, yeah, because one thing that we see in our schools is that our children, immigrant children, don't even think about it. For them, it's like it's not something reachable. So we want to change that. And we're discussing with doctors, with the with University of Alberta, Faculty of Medicine, with the engineers, how they can help FRAP in collaboration with uh, the uh, Conseil Scolaire Centre Nord and okay. other Conseil Scolaire, okay. how we can do that uh, next year. So that's one thing very important, I think, that we're planning to do. And FRAP, it's a, 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 a partner, it's a partner with at least 12 organizations here in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. And we are helping, we, were, we have been helping uh, Edmontonians that were impacted by the COVID. So FRAP was the income support organization. So we were providing financial support to everyone impacted by the, the, the COVID in the whole Edmonton and, in, and, its, and its region. So I want to say thank to all our partners that were supporting us in this. I also want to say, to say thank to ERCC because mm -hmm. it's our main funder, but also the city of Edmonton and the government of Ed Edmonton for all the help that, all the resources that they were able to give us so that we can help uh, uh, our, uh, our community. But La Frappe is not done yet. They have some ambitious projects coming up. Stay tuned. Offering services in English and 31 other languages, they have been helping families with COVID-19 positive members or those required to isolate due to exposure with food support, emergency income support, or connection to long-term income support, those who require a place to isolate safely or are lonely and stressed and just need someone to connect. We are talking about a e e -C -R -R -C, the Edmonton COVID-19 Rapid Response Collaborative. 
One of their team is here to tell us more about the project Rounding Up. The focus of the Edmonton COVID-19 Rapid Response Collaborative, or ECRRC, um, was a collective effort of about 13 agencies in Edmonton who saw the need to implement an inclusive emergency response model where diverse and marginalized communities would be properly supported. And so our guiding framework throughout this whole period has been that um, those accessing our supports receive immediate and dignified support when diagnosed with COVID-19 or are required to isolate. And so we also aimed with our framework to strengthen relationships and community networks by doing um, very important community engagement and involvement. And so some of the supports we provided were including things like fresh and culturally relevant food um, hampers. We provided financial assistance to those who maybe lost income due to having um, to isolate. We provided free mental health counseling um, and we also supported people to get their vaccinations through maybe providing rides to appointments, um, promoting accurate health information, and facilitating vaccine clinics and information sessions as well. So lots of work has happened over the last couple months. Um, and some of the highlights I can just say here in our short period of time is that we provided over 1,250 fresh food hampers to those who had to isolate at home. Um, we provided free mental health counseling, as well as organized multiple workshops, um, information sessions, um, and cultural events, especially aimed towards the Indigenous families and communities around Edmonton. We also um, assisted many people with mortgage payments, utility payments, rent payments. Um, and we also built some really amazing connections with community partners and faith leaders, mainly to combat vaccine hesitancy and promote vaccinations in those communities. Um, and then, yeah, we also facilitated and partnered with many agencies to put on vaccine clinics and information sessions. So it's, uh, it's been a really amazing time and we've done so much. I wish I could talk more about all that we've done, but those are some of the great highlights. There's no other program quite like ours. Our, as Jessica had mentioned previously, it was 13 partner agencies within the city that came together and to do this collaboration to be able to give Edmontonians the help that they needed during, well, a specific part of the pandemic anyway, although we were not able to continue. Our last day or closing day will be this Friday, the 31st of December. Um, going forward, um, our Facebook page will still be available until the end of January, which is actually really great because during the last few months of the collaborative, we really kind of brought ourselves together between all the coordinators. So as Jessica had also mentioned, we have four main things that we were assisting people with. So we were helping them with food support, income support, mental health support, and vaccine support. And so we all came together and we put together a long-term plan knowing that this time would come. So going forward, we have you know, a long list of resources for Edmontonians and Albertans to, to, to look at should they need that help going forward. Unfortunately, it, it probably won't be as, uh, let's say, hands-on as we were. We were able to help in a broad spectrum of things, but these resources are still available. In terms of food support, there's a wonderful um, program called Care for All, uh, that provides fresh food hampers at a reduced price for people, as well as the multicultural health brokers. Um, income support, the Bissell Center Community Bridge Program is fantastic for those who are facing eviction. Um, vaccine support um, also has a bunch of really good ones. Africa Center is going to continue with mental health support. And so, you know, there's a lot of great programs that are still going to be there in the future. And we've given everybody the resource list that they need, should they be able to need to access. It. Hope is, is that what we've been able to do so far has at least helped them enough to kind of jump on to the next transition phase going okay. forward in, in COVID. And of course, there are plenty of people that unfortunately maybe didn't know about our services or were not able to reach us in time, but we're hoping with the resources that we have given them to contact, it will be enough to kind of get them through this really difficult period. But I would love to see more funding come towards COVID. Um, unfortunately, there are clients everywhere that are really suffering that could really use the help. Um, the broad majority of our clients were newcomers to Canada and Indigenous populations. And so it's, it's already difficult as it is for them. And then on top of it, to add the extra stress of COVID is just uncanny. And so unfortunately they have that to kind of worry about as well, but I'm hoping that, 
you know, such a resilient bunch will be able to get through it and use the resources that we have there for them as well. Large part of our focus for the last maybe four months of our project was um, promoting um, vaccine awareness, promoting health information, really trying to get people to go get their shot. And so now I think that's a really large thing that we have to promote to people is go get your shot, go get your booster, um, keep trying to protect yourself the best you can. While we're not here, um, please use the tools that are available in our community to best protect you. I think the one really great takeaway from this project too is that this was a really successful project in terms of you know, the goals that we had and the framework that we've built. And so now there is a really solid framework and a lot of key learnings that we can take away from this project on how to build a really effective emergency response um, effort in Edmonton. And so, you know, hopefully our funders and the city and the province will look at something like this. And if there's a need for it, you know, there's that guiding framework and these results that we can actually show something like this was effective. And so if that need is still there, who knows? Maybe down the road, they will build something like this again. But in the meantime, we can be proud of the fact that we did serve thousands of people during a really difficult time. Um, and hopefully some of the resources we give them will help them. But yeah, I agree. We're definitely not out of the woods yet. Um, it's hard to come to the end and feel like there's still more to do. But um, I am really proud of what our team did. We had an amazing team. Um, a really beautiful collaborative between a lot of great agencies. And so um, we have to be proud of what we've done, but yeah, there is always that, that thought at the end that we could have done more. And now the question of the week is, what do you do when the weather is very cold over a long period of time? Arrive safely this holiday season. Winter driving conditions can be unpredictable. So slow down plan ahead, and get the 511 Alberta apps for the latest road reports and alerts. Now, what does the Edmonton High Level Bridge Lights represent this week? December 28th and December 29th, there will be red and white for the 2022 II HF World Junior Hockey Championship match featuring Canada's national junior team. On December the 31st, the High Level Bridge, the City Hall, Mottard Conservatory, Rosedale Power Plant, and Waterdale Bridge will be light in a multitude of colors in celebration of New Year's Eve. Yay, here come January the 1st. Dynamic programming to celebrate the arrival of 2022. You want to know more? Go to www.edmonton.ca slash like the bridge. Avant de clore ce journal, vous êtes bien sur Diversity TV et voici le sommaire de votre journal du 31 décembre 2021 en français. Tout d'abord. Allons à la rencontre de certains récipiendaires des AC Awards 2021 en Alberta et en Ontario. Dans tout un autre registre, la frappe, entendez, francophonie albertaine plurielle, célèbre une année pleine de succès, que ce soit dans ses missions d'établissement des nouveaux arrivants ou alors aux côtés des membres des communautés sévèrement touchées par la pandémie du COVID-19. Eh bien, l'année 2021 a été une année, euh, comme tout le monde le sait, une année euh, euh, essentiellement influencée par euh, la COVID et les mesures de confinement. Mais euh, c'est une année qui a été extrêmement occupée pour la frappe. Nous avons euh, euh, énormément travaillé pour euh, soutenir les immigrants qui étaient arrivés et qui arrivent, qui étaient arrivés peu avant la pandémie et ceux qui étaient déjà là. Donc nous avons travaillé euh, sans relâche. Et puis si je peux vous faire une, une révélation, euh, à notre grande surprise, euh, euh, le nombre de notre clientèle n'a cessé d'augmenter. C'est vraiment surprenant. Oui, oui, malgré la fermeture des frontières euh, et malgré les mesures de confinement. Donc nous avons été très sollicités par euh, non seulement ceux qui étaient déjà arrivés, mais ceux qui étaient déjà là. Je peux vous donner par exemple un exemple. L'année dernière, euh, parce que comme vous savez, notre année fiscale, c'est euh, du 1er avril au 31 mars. Mm -hmm. avant, le 31, avant le 31 mars dernier, mm -hmm. nous avons servi plus de 1000 
personnes, 1000 clients dans la période du confinement. Et actuellement, nous, sommes, nous avons déjà servi plus de 700 et notre année finit le 31 mars euh, 2021, euh, 2022. Donc, c'est vous dire que euh, nous sommes extrêmement occupés et, et, et malgré les mesures de confinement et tout, nous n'avons pas eu de, de temps de relâche. Maintenant, nous, va, nous avons des services non seulement en personne, mais nous avons aussi des services à distance. Donc, nous avons créé un système de services hybride. Nous pouvons recevoir les clients ici, mais nous pouvons aussi vous recevoir, à, à, nous pouvons aussi vous aider à distance. Par exemple, Emilienne, nous avons euh, une bibliothèque informatique. Chaque fois qu'un immigrant arrive nouvellement maintenant à la frappe, nous lui donnons euh, un ordinateur portable de très bonne qualité. Donc, il n'est pas obligé de venir ici. Il peut connecter avec nous à travers l'ordinateur portable que nous lui remettons et il peut avoir tous les services possibles qu'il peut avoir ici en présentiel. Et s'il ne peut pas arriver à la frappe, nous sommes en mesure d'aller là où il se trouve, lui remettre l'ordinateur portable, l'aider à connecter, lui montrer comment on, fait la, on, on se connecte et, et, et pouvoir lui rendre ici des services. Et nous le faisons aussi bien pour les adultes que pour les enfants. L'année prochaine, il y a un certain nombre de choses que nous allons faire. La première chose, c'est que nous devons nous rapprocher de notre clientèle. C'est très important ce rapprochement de la clientèle parce que vous savez, notre bureau central pour le moment est au sud, mais nous allons ouvrir d'autres bureaux. À partir du mois de janvier, nous allons ouvrir un bureau au nord, à l'intérieur de Norgate Mall. Nous avons, déjà, nous avons déjà le local, il est en train d'être aménagé. Donc d'ici la fin du mois de janvier, nous allons l'annoncer solennellement et vous inviter certainement à l'ouverture. Mais ça, c'est un procédé pour nous rapprocher de notre clientèle. L'autre chose, c'est que nous avons constaté que de plus en plus, il y a de plus en plus des enjeux de maladie mentale liés à la situation dans laquelle nous sommes. À partir de l'année prochaine, la FRAP va commencer à faire ce qu'on appelle la gestion des cas. C'est-à-dire que nous allons nous occuper des problèmes liés à, aux enjeux de la maladie mentale avec euh, euh, toute notre clientèle qui pourrait être affectée par cette situation. Mais nous allons aussi maintenant recevoir les réfugiés. Et nous allons euh, aider à la réinstallation des réfugiés. Est-ce que c'est une nouveauté? Oui, c'est une nouveauté pour nous parce qu'on n'avait pas ce programme officiellement. Mais nous allons l'avoir à partir du 1er avril. Okay. Et maintenant la question de la semaine. Que fait-on lorsqu'il fait très froid sur une longue période? Merci d'être resté des nôtres. De nous, ici, à vous, où que vous soyez, bonne année 2022 et tous nos meilleurs voeux. This is all we had for you this week. Thank you for watching Diversity TV Community Newscast. Be the first to get our news community newscast as it happened. Please, subscribe and hit the bell notification on our Diversity TV YouTube channel. We are on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. Our website is www.diversitymag.ce. See you next week, because when it's Friday, it's your newscast from Diversity TV. But before we go, From our team to you, wherever you are, Happy New Year and all our best wishes. Thank you for watching.